Hey guys, welcome to the 2020 Maid Summit. I am so excited to talk to you today, even if it's only for 20 minutes. Thanks, Samar. But before we get started, can we all just take a moment and appreciate this much needed distraction in the crazy world that we're living in today? A huge shout out to Amar and our whole Zenme team for pulling off yet another amazing event. So much has happened since last year's Maid Summit. The world broke, and a lot of us had to step outside of our comfort zones and do things that we never thought we'd be doing again. I've seen a lot of maid service owners that have had to go back into the field after 20 years. I've seen people shut down their businesses temporarily. I was included in that. And then, of course, a lot of us with kids had to figure out how to keep them from climbing the walls while they're at home all day. But as Dumbledore would say, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. I was lucky enough to see tons of success stories throughout this pandemic that gave me hope. I got to watch students from all over the world take the opportunity to invest in their education and learn exactly how to set up their businesses digitally so that they were ready for a massive comeback. So who am I? I'm Courtney Wisely. I'm part of the Zen Maid team, the ClickUp team, owner of Magic Maids, and founder of Rescue My Maid Service. I love this industry. I know it inside and out, and my favorite thing to do is to teach technology and automation to maid service owners. I love seeing them go from, I'm not techie, I could never do that, to I just took a week vacation and my business ran itself. True story, happens all the time. Now, how does one just walk away from their business without the fear of it crumbling? Automation and oversight. It's 2020, y'all. If you're still doing things on pen and paper, if you're spending hours a day doing repetitive tasks, if you are constantly running around because of the demands on your attention, you are running your business the hard way. So today, in the very limited time I have with you, I'm going to show you what can and should be automated or outsourced in your maid service. You're going to learn which tools you should know about that are going to make your life easier, and you're going to have a firm grasp on what systems and processes you need to achieve true location and time independence. At the end of this talk, there is a free download to help you get started on your journey to automation and freedom. So make sure to grab that on the way out. And without further ado, let's get started. All right. It's time to learn how to automate your freedom. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to say no to stress. And I know that most of you are sitting there like this. (laughs) Now, I know that's easier said than done, but here's the deal. To be able to put all of these things into place, you do have to set time aside to do that. You can ask any of my students that are in my course um, and you're running my past students and I require them to put in at least 10 hours a week to get the stuff built out and that's for 10 weeks straight. So you're, this is not something you're going to fix overnight. However, you are going to learn a ton of stuff here that is basically going to put you on the right path and make sure to grab that download at the end because that'll have an actual like roadmap for you as well. So we want to make sure that you are prepared. Prepared for what? Well, be prepared because anything can happen. Obviously, this past year has shown us that. And we need to be prepared to be able to run our businesses digitally because, you know, you never know what's going to happen. And if anything, God forbid, were to happen to you or any of your family members and you have to drop everything and go, you should have a business that is able to A, run itself or B, be set up in a way that anybody can step in and take over and know exactly what to do. So let's first talk about what you can automate. So this is a very long list, and this is honestly not even the half of it, (laughs) but I didn't want to overwhelm you guys. So the first thing that we can obviously automate is your customer guidelines. Those things can go out. They can be signed digitally by your customers. They can be sent back to you. Um, There's a ton of people that are not doing this that definitely should be. This protects you. It protects them. And it's something that really makes you guys look a lot more professional. If you don't have these in place, bad things can happen. (laughs) Things can get broken, and you may not have a policy for that. They might be canceling all the time. You don't have a policy for that. Or you may even have these policies. They're just not in written form. And it's hard for people to take anything seriously if they did not sign something saying that. So I'm sure you guys have run across that in the past. And for those of you that are just starting out, take my advice, get your customer guidelines in order. And in my opinion, you should definitely have these digitized because it just makes the whole process so much smoother. To do that, we use a tool called Sign Request, but there's also Adobe Sign, DocuSign, um, all kinds of different uh, signing tools. But I really like Sign Request. A, it's super cheap. It's like 80 bucks a year or something like that. And also it is super simple to use. So you just upload your document into Sign Request. And then at the bottom, you'll just add in a little signature box and a date box, and that's it. So you'll send it off. And to do that, you just literally just add in a contact and hit send. And it is simple as that. So I would definitely recommend taking a look at that. I will put a link in the document that you guys download from here um, that has a link to everything that I'm talking about, by the way, so you don't forget anything. 
So that is the first thing that I would recommend. Next, let's talk about your hiring and your application stuff. So this is obviously the biggest thing that this industry struggles with. Um, hiring people is an ongoing process. It's something that you guys have to get really good at. I am going to include on that download a list of our questions that we go through on our interviews, and hopefully that will help. But um, but basically giving them a spot to digitally apply is your first step. You want to, obviously you can use Facebook, you can use Indeed and all of that. But if you want to have application filtering, you can use some really cool tools out there. So I used Typeform for the longest time because it has logic and calculations in it. So here inside of Typeform, they would click start. This is, of course, on my website. Um, it was right here under apply now, but you can put this link on your website and they would just go through this application, you know, type everything in. It's super easy to get through. Um, and then here at the bottom, it tells them, you know, how much they have left and all of that. It's a very simple and clean way to get applicants. Now I put the link to this in my Indeed and Facebook ad because I want to see if they can follow directions and I want to make sure that they actually apply through here instead of just replying to a message and saying like, Hey, uh, are you hiring or whatever? Because I want it to actually go through the calculations and logic. So the way that I do that is inside of Typeform. You'll, um, I'll put a link to, to watch a tutorial on it, but basically you set up calculations to where if they say, you know, that they have been convicted of a felony or, you know, whatever your qualifiers are, it will automatically direct them to a landing page at the end that says, thank you for applying. If qualified, we'll contact you soon. And there you go. And then if they do pass, then of course they go on to a uh, link called Calendly. So for those of you that have not heard of Calendly, this is a super easy way to set up a uh, phone interview link. So whenever somebody passes through the qualifiers, then of course it directs them right to your Calendly page. So this will pop up and it says, hooray, you've passed the pre-screening. To continue the application process, please schedule a phone interview by choosing a date and time to the right and we'll call you at the chosen time. Please let us know if you need to reschedule. So they'll come in here, they'll pick a date, they'll pick a time, this is too easy. And then this phone interview will pop up on our calendar. So once they go through the phone interview, then they go through the first in-person interview and then a final interview. Now I know a lot of you are solo operations, so you don't necessarily have to have that many steps, but I definitely recommend the application, the phone interview, and then one in-person interview at least. So right now you guys can do Zoom interviews if you need to do that or however you wanna do it, but really the point is to get all of these people to filter through your application process without you having to waste a bunch of time vetting them, which is the biggest time waster ever because you'll get 300 applications and maybe you know 50 of them will be qualified and then half of them won't even show up to the interview and it's the whole thing. You guys know this. So that is my tip for the hiring stuff. All right, next up, quotes and booking requests. So there's always a big debate about whether or not you should have a quote form versus a booking form on your website. Whichever way it is, as long as you have one of them, that's really the main point here. We wanna make sure that leads are easily able to contact you and to submit a quote request or a booking request as simply as possible. So if you don't have one of these on your website, or if you don't have a website, that's really your first step. You gotta get a website. But as long as you have a website, put one of these on there. Hopefully you have ZenMade or something else that has a quote form or booking form on it. If not, then you can always add in a plugin on your website. They usually have all kinds of little forms that you can do in there. They're not gonna be as pretty, they're not gonna be as detailed or you know customizable as ours, but I will show you what that looks like real quick and then you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about here. So right on my website, um, there is a clear call to action to either call now or get a quote. So anytime you see these buttons, those are call to action buttons. So you should see those all over your website. If you don't, if you scroll and scroll and scroll and you don't see any, um, that means you don't have enough. <laughs> so you really can never have enough call to actions on your website, but it makes it very easy for somebody to click get a quote and then it goes directly to the ZenMade quote form, which is called a booking form in ZenMade, but I just switched it up to a quote form. There's a whole debate about that, which we can go into at a later date, but basically mine is super simple and easy. Um, I like that it is just the basic information and then they fill it out and they say, get a quote. Then this comes directly into ZenMade and I will have all this information that I need and I will call them and get them booked. So it's that simple. Now, if you are not website savvy, of course, you can always hire somebody to build you a website. I do not recommend using, um, you know, some obscure website builder and trying to do it yourself unless you're going to use WordPress because WordPress is really great. So, you know, there's all kinds of different themes and builders on there. Rescue My Maid Service 
service does offer websites as well. So if you guys do need help with that, we do offer WordPress sites. Um, but anyways, as soon as you put your quote form on here, this is going to automatically increase your traffic because people are going to land on here. And if there's nothing here for them to click on, then they're just going to leave. All right. So next is recurring tasks and organization. So this is something that you guys are probably doing a ton of recurring tasks every day that you don't even realize. So if I were you, I would start a log of everything that you're doing in a day. I know that sounds super tedious, but I promise you, if you do that for one week, you're going to see patterns emerge. You're going to realize how much time you're spending doing like one particular task and maybe even you're doing the same task multiple times a day. So just getting oversight of actually like what you're really spending your time on is going to help you a ton whenever you're trying to organize your life and figure out, you know, a game plan. So learn about time blocking. Time blocking is awesome. Um, and learn about how to kind of group things together so that maybe you just have to do one thing a day instead of seven of the same thing. So for example, rather than charging, um, you know, a card every time that a cleaning is over once a day, batch all the cards and run them. If your scheduling software does not do that, I would definitely take a look at ZenMade because that is something that we can do. Now, I also want to introduce you to the red dot green dot principle. So if you get in front of a big whiteboard, which is my favorite thing to do, I love getting in front of whiteboards. It's kind of funny because I'm super digital, but I absolutely love whiteboards. So if you get in front of your whiteboard and you start writing down everything that you're in charge of, all of the things that you do in a day, not, not like repetitive, like writing the same thing multiple times, just individually, what things do you do? put a red dot next to any of the activities that do not bring you money. So any non-revenue generating activities, that would be a red dot. Scheduling people, right? That's red dot stuff. Um, if it is a revenue generating activity, then put a green dot next to it. And whenever you step back and you take a look, all of those red dot things, those are all of the things that you should outsource or hand over to a VA or office manager, okay? So it should give you a better idea just doing that activity of like how much stuff you're doing that you probably shouldn't be because you as the owner, your brain is very, very valuable. So you need to be doing non-repetitive tasks. You need to be doing actual revenue generating activities such as going out and networking, such as creating, you know, new marketing strategies, all of the things that you as the owner really can't hand off until you are truly an absentee owner. So just start thinking about that kind of stuff and make sure that you're really making a game plan to get out of those red dot activities. All right. So next client and lead follow ups. So this is different because there's different things that you need to do for your clients and your leads. So for your clients, you want to make sure that you're constantly following up with them, especially with surveys. So if you use something like Quality Driven, which is an awesome survey software that we use, um, you can make sure that you're sending out surveys after every single clean. This helps me um, see whenever there's training opportunities, it helps me, you know, make sure that our girls are completely consistent and that I'm not having any issues across the board. So use something like this if you really need to get a handle of your quality. Uh, we have great, we have a great team. We have awesome survey scores. So I luckily am in a very good position here, but I may not have been had I not used a tool like this because the girls know that these surveys go out. I completely make them aware of all of these scores and everything. So it really does keep them on their toes. Now, as far as the other communication besides the surveys, you can use MailChimp which is a really awesome free way to market. Um, you can create different things like these specials are for my leads. But if you scroll down here, we've got different things like um, it's time to upgrade your cleaning. It's, hey, did you know we have a referral program? Um, did you or we really would love it if you could leave us a review on Google or on Facebook or any of these types of things. That's the kind of stuff that you would send to your clients. So uh, start thinking about kind of like what communication your clients would get versus your leads. Your leads are easy. Those are every month you can put a new special out, um, you know, $50 off this month only if you book a deep clean or whatever. That's really what you need to do. But for your clients, you could do all kinds of stuff. I mean, upgrades are huge. There's a lot of people out there that don't take advantage of asking their clients for upgrades. And it is so much easier to make money off of the clients that you have than it is to bring on a brand new client. So definitely take advantage of that. those opportunities. Do it in April whenever it's time for spring cleaning. Do it in the fall whenever it's time for Thanksgiving and they need to upgrade and get their oven clean, things like that. Um, definitely start thinking about those kinds of things. Now I want to jump into ClickUp real quick and show you our follow-up process for our leads. So whether you use Trello, Asana, Pipedrive, there's all kinds of different 
project management softwares out there, ClickUp is by far the best one, in my opinion. It is also the most robust. It's the most beautifully interfaced and the most powerful. So uh, the way that we do it is we've got our new leads that automatically come in here directly from ZenMade. They go into first follow-up, second follow-up, pending guidelines. Hopefully they signed up. And then, of course, lost if they're lost. And that is how we do it. So it makes it to where as soon as we move people through this, it automatically sets the due date and it tells us like, hey, you need to follow up with this person based on automations that we create. It also sends those guidelines that I showed you earlier automatically as soon as we pop it into pending guidelines. Pretty cool. So now this is, of course, if you are using ClickUp plus Zapier, which is an automation tool, plus sign request, you would kind of connect them all. All of that stuff I teach in my course, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what is possible and what you should be doing with your leads. All right, next up, social media. Now we just touched on email marketing. I kind of just bunched that in, but let's go ahead and touch on social media real quick because a lot of you guys are super confused whenever it comes to your social media. You're like, what do I post? How often do I post? How do I post all of those things? So I'm going to show you a super easy way. And on that download that you guys get, it'll actually have a list of ideas for you to use uh, for your social media. So there's lots of tools that you can use to post on social media automatically, such as Hootsuite, Buffer, those kinds of things. But I actually think it's super easy to just do it directly from Facebook. There's really no need to pay for a tool like that if you just have the one business. So um, if I were you, I would just go into your business page. You start creating a post. And then you'll see right here, it says post scheduling and additional options are available in publishing tools. So if you click on that, it will take you into the publishing tools on your business page, which by the way, you can connect Facebook to Instagram to post automatically. And you can also connect Twitter and LinkedIn if you want to uh, link those as well. So that basically you can just post it in two places and it'll post in four. So as you can see, I live in a very small town, so there's very few people here. But um, as you can see, I can create, if you were looking at my engagement, <laughs> if I can create a post here and then um, I will write it, boom, boom, boom. And then I can click right here and I can say schedule and then just choose the date and the time. And that's it. So if I were you, I would once a week sit down, create the posts, use something like Canva, which is super easy to use. Um, if you go to canva.com, you'll be able to create a design, click social media, and it is just too easy to start creating designs in here. So um, I'll put a link to some training in that in that document as well. But you know, basically, you can just choose a template, switch out some some pictures, put in your logo, all of that. It's really an easy to use system. So I would recommend just doing it like once a week, batch all your social media, and then make sure that you are front of mind for everybody in your home town or in your service area. Now, again, not to plug Rescue My Maid Service constantly, but whenever I do come across things that we do offer and you guys might not want to do, I feel like I do need to tell you. So if you guys learn that you don't like social media and you don't like design and all that kind of stuff, you can go to rescuemymaidservice.com and you can pop onto social media graphics and it'll show you right here. And then there you go. So that is there as well. But let's go ahead and move on to the next thing on our list, which is quality check requests and request offs. So these things, you may think, how in the world could those things be automated? Well, I will show you. We use a tool called Slack. So I'm sure many of you have heard of Slack. It is just a free messaging app. Um, this is how I communicate with all of my cleaners. So the way that I have my system set up is anytime that I want a quality check done, I can just pop a little tag in, click up, and then it automatically sends the information to the quality check channel. So let me show you what that looks like. So here inside of my quality checks channel, I have an automation popping up that is of course silly because I love Harry Potter. So I have Dobby saying, hey, it's time for a deep clean quality check. Here's the client's name. And then it says checks in made for details on this cleaning. Please show up for a quality check during the final 30 minutes of the cleaning and click this link to complete your quality check. So this automation happens directly from one singular action that I do in ClickUp and this automatically pops in with the correct information. Now my quality check person is in here and she would get this notification. She would click on the link whenever she got to the house and it automatically takes her to our quality check form. So on her phone, she can just put in the client's name who cleaned it and then just start going check, 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 check all the way down and then at the very bottom, she just says how many things were missed, any comments, and then she rates them and then submits. It's super easy. So then this comes directly into ClickUp and I can see an ongoing um, board of all the quality checks that are coming in. So that's the first thing that I was talking about automating. Now, the next thing is request offs, which we also do in Slack. So request offs, I have a channel for that. 
And basically, if they need to request off, they click the link. And that message, by the way, this is pinned to the channel in Slack so that it's always there. But they just click request off and then they put in their name, what days they need off, the reason, and then the email address associated with Slack. This is important for the automation because as soon as they request off, it immediately comes into ClickUp. I can approve it or reject it and it will immediately message the person in Slack. And I just had one. Brittany requests that off. And so it pops in, your request off was approved. So it's pretty cool. Um, this is a way that you can kind of simplify all sorts of processes in your business with the communication. The bigger your company gets, the more this kind of stuff is really going to help. Whenever you're small, of course, you might think like, oh, this doesn't take that much time. But I promise you, whenever you start scaling or whenever you get employees that are requesting off all the time, um, these types of of processes and systems really do make everything super smooth. All right, so the next is training for your office staff. How in the world would you automate training for your office staff? Ho, 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 check this out. So I have built out an entire virtual training library, which by the way, this is something that you would do in my course if you sign up for the Digital Systems Bootcamp. This is part of the last week of class. But uh, basically it goes through everything that an office person or VA would go through. And I have it all broken down by all of the things that they um, are in charge of. And I even have a test at the end of each section so that I know that they actually are doing it. So I can see right here, they do their little test and then each one pertains to that section and there you go. So like inside of each thing, there's a video showing them exactly, you know, how to charge cards. Okay, so charging cards is actually... And I use Loom to create these. It's super simple. You can embed it right here. It is an awesome part of ClickUp that I utilize a lot. So that is, and what this means is that even if my VA or office person doesn't work out or if I fire them or if they quit or whatever, the next person that I hire, I just say, here you go, go through the training library and then there you go. So. This is a huge thing, you guys, because a lot of you think that you can't step away from the business because no one understands how to run it the way that you run it. This is the time that you need to start documenting how you are doing things because as soon as you make these videos, you're gonna start feeling like all these like five pound weights are just starting to lift off of your shoulders because as soon as you have it down like this, then you start to realize like, okay, wow, I really can be free from this. I can actually step away and take a break and somebody else can do this. So I promise you, this is a very, very important step in, in being a business owner. And especially as you're growing and as you're learning toward or leaning towards stepping away a little bit more. And the last thing on our list here is autoresponders. So this is something that is super easy to set up. If you're using your Facebook business page, you can set those up in the settings. Um, but I also wanted to touch on your website. So on my website, you can see right down here on the bottom right there is a little chat bot so I can type in hello and then it'll automatically come up with um, a little chat bot so this is using drift which you can see right down here drift this is a free tool that I am using and it is uh, it's pretty easy to install it's a WordPress plugin so you can just instantly install it on there it also has JavaScript and all that if you have a different platform but it is super easy to set up and it is free. So there's really no reason that you shouldn't have a chat bot on your website. <laughs> and uh, but this is really cool because it lets people communicate with us even if, our, if we're closed and then we have their messages waiting for us and never get back in. You can never give people too many ways to get a hold of your company, I promise you. <laughs> okay, so now you've seen this huge massive list of all the things, or, well, some of the things that you can automate in your business, but you are probably wondering, how am I gonna do all of this? Well, here's a list of all kinds of tools that will help you with a lot of the things that I talked about. So you can go, you know, go through sign request, DocuSign, Adobe Sign, all of these different things. They're going to help you in your day-to-day -day life. Some of these are more expensive than others. Some of these are free. Um, so really, it's just kind of a general list for you guys to look into everything and figure out what is going to work for you. So for those of you that actually want to not spend a bunch of time going through a million different softwares and seeing what actually can puzzle piece together, I would definitely recommend that you take a look at the Digital Systems Bootcamp. So the Digital Systems Bootcamp, or DSB for short, is a 10-week course that goes through literally everything you would ever need to know. <laughs> this is something I put my blood, sweat, and tears into. I used to teach this in person for big groups, and then whenever COVID happened, I transitioned to online, and it turns out I like this way a lot better because I'm able to teach a lot more people. So on the left-hand side here, you can just kind of see um, you know, what this breakdown is here. But basically each week, there's 10 weeks. Uh, if you go through it, it goes all the way through the tech foundations and tools. So this is like from square one. So if you guys think I'm not techie, I can't do this. 
I got you. It's okay. I'm going to go through the difference in browsers, bookmarks, cache and cookies, Gmail hacks, hotkeys, Chrome extensions, last pass, screenshots, color matching, blah, 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 blah. Okay. That's all just in week one. And then you've got homework in every single week. We also have live class calls. So we, I hold your hand throughout the entire time. We have a Facebook group called the DSB Homeroom that people are extremely active in with all kinds of questions that you will be able to ask your questions, get answers. They will pop in Loom videos and then I'll pop in my Loom video to respond. So it's like a, it's almost like a 24 seven support helpline really. <laughs> but for 10 weeks, we work together very, very closely and I make sure that you have everything set up. So the first week is all those tech foundations and tools. And then I set you up in Google Drive. So you learn all about Google Drive. You get all of your documents set up, branded, all of those things. Then we jump into hiring and company culture, networking, marketing. And then week five starts ClickUp. So for those of you that are like, I don't understand ClickUp. I've looked at it. It is very overwhelming. I totally understand. It took me almost a year to build out my infrastructure in ClickUp. Not because ClickUp is hard or that it is a bad software. It is because it's so powerful that there's just an overwhelming amount of opportunities that you can do in there. So it's very overwhelming. So um, you guys don't have to do that, though, because I've already done that. So we go through everything about ClickUp. We set up all of your admin, your your um, inventory, your marketing, your finances, your human resources, your applications, all this stuff is automated. And then I even go through and teach you guys Zapier. I teach you, you guys will literally be building out Zaps yourself. Um, there's just a ton of things that you get to do in the DSP. Now, at the end of it, you also get the virtual training library all set up. So by the end of the 10 weeks, and by the way, it is a boot camp. It's called boot camp for a reason because you will work your butt off. And it's like 10 hours a week at least that you're going to have to put into this course. However, when you are done, you are going to be like, holy crap, my entire business is transformed. I can literally take my laptop, run my business from anywhere, and everything is smooth and automated and simple. I have seen most people cut, just like cut it in half, like their time in half, at least minimum. Some people have gone from 40 hours a week to like five hours a week because of how much time it all saves. So, um, I just want to kind of touch on that and show you what was all included because I've gotten a ton of questions about it. We had so many students in the first two classes all over the world and watching everybody just succeed and, and watching them learn automation and learn their own skill sets. There's so many people that just don't realize what they can do. And so it's super fun to watch people go from, oh my God, I don't know anything about technology to look what I did, Courtney. Look what I built out. Oh my gosh, I built this automation. I had this idea. I mean, it's just incredible. I am a teacher at heart. So watching people learn and educate themselves is is just the most rewarding thing ever to me. So, so if you guys want to learn more about the DSB or anything else that we offer, you can go over to rescuemymaidservice.com. You can click on training vault to find out more about the DSB, or you can click on services to find out about all the other stuff that we do. And then make sure to sign up for our next class, which will be starting soon. I hope to see you all there. And I can't believe it, but that's it for my talk for the 2020 Maid Summit. Last year's talk was three hours and I had to cut it down to an hour and a half because they yelled at me and they were like, this is too long. And so I cut it down to an hour and a half. And then this year he says 20 minutes. I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to do this in 20 minutes? So sorry if I talked fast, but um, it's because I want to bring as much value as possible to you guys. And I want you to see what's possible in the world. It is so cool what you can do with technology and automation. Do not let anybody tell you that you don't need to learn this stuff. You do need to learn this stuff. And I promise you, it's not that hard, especially if you have a teacher that is willing to put in the work and the time to help you through every step of the way. That's what I love to do. And I hope to see you in the next class.